went from oil change to oil change without ever getting dirty the whole time I owned the car. Yeah, you see what happens, Charlie, is uh, is oil change places, Jiffy Lube, you know, other junky, crappy places. They don't change those canister filters when they do an oil change. Like these crappy lube techs, oh, I don't feel like doing that. Their customer's never going to know, you know. And there's been ones that, are, that I've gotten that are described just like as you described it, man. They're all sucked in and caked up with sludge and... Oh, yeah, man. I think he'd be pretty nasty. For sure, but... I mean, like like you said, man, I mean, you can you can clean these engines right up, man. You use a little bit of kerosene. You put, like, two quarts of kerosene in the motor. And uh, two quarts of oil, three quarts of oil, depending on how much... Uh, how much... Uh, how big the engine is. And boil, boil, let it run for 15 or 20 minutes. Drain the oil. Do it again. Uh, drain the oil again, and then, you know, fill it up, uh, do a final oil change on it, and the thing will be brand spanking new. Yep, yep, kerosene will cut almost any kind of gunk that's in there. You know, you, you, you can't use something as volatile as gasoline, though. Know? You know, that, that would never do. <laughs> uh, I can tell you a funny story about... <laughs> gasoline in a crankcase. Oh, really? <clears throat> well, I'd like to hear it. Guy that worked for my dad back in the uh, 1970s. He had this car, or was it a pickup truck? Might have been a pickup truck. And uh, I was doing truck repairs, you know, 18 wheelers, not, uh, not pickup trucks. And he cracked the oil pan. The road getting up to his house was like, you know, 12 inch deep ruts. And he hit a rock with the oil pan and he cracked it and it was leaking oil. So he asked me, he says, well, do you think you could braise that without taking it off? I says, I don't know. It's not right smack dab on the bottom if I drain the oil out first. So... He drained the oil out. I said, well, my torches won't reach there. He said, that's no problem. He started up and moved it 10 feet with no oil in it. And uh, without the oil on the cylinders, on the uh, rings, uh, fuel vapor went by the pistons. Uh, about an hour or so later, I, I crawled underneath there. <laughs> I laid up the brazen torch. I got the flux. I got the rod. I put the torch to the pit. And Boom! <laughs> I get out from underneath the truck. One valve cover is hanging by one screw. The other valve cover is laying on the ground. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy, man. <clears throat> that's a good story. <laughs> that's a real good story. I, um... I wish I could send you this link. I, um... On my YouTube channel... Speaking of explosions, I was uh, welding. It was after hours. I was working at a at a shop down in South Carolina, and I was working on my buddy's uh, BMW M3 and doing some exhaust modifications to it. And I was welding on the bench, and, and I was spot welding. So I, you know, hit the arc for a second, let off. Arc for a second, let off. And uh, all of a sudden, dude, I hear this explosion. And I throw my mask up and the trash can's on fire. I'm like, what is, what, what the hell just happened? So I'm like, yo, let's check the security cameras. Because we had a security camera that, that picked up the whole shot. And uh, caught it right on camera, dude. You see a perfect, a perfect arc from this, uh, or excuse me, a spark, like a basketball. Go right into the trash can, dude. And boom, the whole trash can blows up. Like papers and everything go flying everywhere. You'd have thought it was maybe staged. You see my boss running across going to go grab the fire extinguisher. <laughs> but uh, it's on my YouTube channel, man. If you guys know where my YouTube channel is on YouTube, it's on there if you want to go see it, man. But yeah, that was the only time I ever blew it. Well, that was the only time I ever blew anything up accidentally at a shop. I, I made a couple oxygen and acetylene bombs in my time.
Good, Jim. Make a transmission. Oh no, I'm cool, man. I'm just uh, just listening out. Yeah, not much going on here, which is a lie, actually. But uh, I'm thinking about what I have to do to get the computer hooked up to the to the big screen here, so I can watch the game tonight. You can be watching the game, Charlie. Well, on the brightest side of that oil pan story, he had another engine with the same valve covers, but he didn't have another oil pan. But that's okay, because the explosion took the dent out of the oil pan. All I had to do was take it down and brazer it. <laughs> oh, man. Did the work for you, dude. You watching a baseball game tonight, Charlie? No, I'm not watching a game. I never watch a game. Fair enough. Yeah, I know a lot of people that are like that. I was like that not that long ago, dude. I was always, always like baseball, but um, any other sport, man, it was just kind of blah. You know, I could take it or leave it. I, uh... <clears throat> I'm just happy it's the weekend. Like, tomorrow's Saturday. I have off on Sunday. It's gonna be a, uh... Looking, always looking forward to the weekend because I am fat and lazy. You know, when we were kids, like, you know, in the 60s, my brother and I, the only sports we were interested in was uh, Formula One and uh, stock car. I don't even think it was NASCAR. I don't even think they called it NASCAR back then. Yeah, they, uh, <coughs> they call it, uh, st I think it was still NASCAR, but it was, everybody called it stock car racing. <coughs> Nobody no, no referred to it as NASCAR or, you know, Winston, uh, or the people, a lot of referred to it as Winston Cup. I used to be big into NASCAR, dude. Back when Mark Martin was still racing, he was my favorite driver. And when he retired, I just lost all interest. I couldn't find interest in another driver things were changing in the sport and uh i guess the sport was getting a lot younger and i just looked that completely lost interest i used to go to dover twice a year i went to the spring race and the fall race every year i got a stack of uh, ticket stubs in my little lanyard i used to wear around my neck i got a bunch of pins from all the uh the races i used to go to only ever been to dover but Dover is only a little over an hour from me, so we're real close, man. And that was the first time I ever got uh, smashed in public at underage. <laughs> oh man, I remember my my sister and I were in the park a lot. I was like 16, you know what I mean? And um, I remember I got like this little pint of Jack Daniels. And I thought I was the coolest thing in the world. I was like drinking, doing little shots, and drinking Coke and. And, uh, man, I remember, it was, I didn't even make it halfway through the race. It was about 100 degrees out that day, man. I'm, like, in the crowd, you know, falling over, like, passing out. <laughs> and my mom's, like, told my sister, get him the hell out of here. And made my sister take me back to the truck and sleep it off. Well, you getting all this, uh, lunch and static down there, Kurt? Yeah, it's pretty much a mess down here, Charlie. Yeah, lightning static is horrendous. Uh, my, my knee never sits still. It's constantly chunking, you know? <laughs> hey, here's a, um, a little known, a little known piece of trivia for you. Do you know where the first ever NASCAR series race, actually not NASCAR series, but NASCAR race, was held when the NASCAR was being formed, when they first, first got the concept of NASCAR racing? Well, I have no clue. A little track in Rhode Island. Okay. A little track.
racetrack in Rhode Island? Yeah, um, I, I, uh, I was looking at the history of uh, a drive-in theater that I used to go to when I was young, up in um, Cumberland or Lincoln, uh, somewhere up in that area, North Smithfield, and uh, they gave the history of, you know, the drive-in was made after... Uh, storm and had ruined the racetrack that had been there previously. So then I started researching the racetrack and come to find out that's the racetrack that the first uh, organized, uh, you know, syndicated type of race was held. And when I first moved here from Texas, uh, we we uh, lived in Oxon Hill, Maryland. Just a short bicycle ride from Rosecroft Raceway, which was a horse racing track, but none like none I'd ever seen before. It was a harness racing track. You know where they connect the horse's legs with uh, with leather straps. Uh, both legs on the left connected and both legs on the right are connected so they have to trot you know they don't run like regular horses they run you know kind of funny looking and they pull essentially what is a little chariot behind them and uh, jockey riding on a little chariot and I'd never seen the like of it before you know when I was I guess when nine years old we used to get on our bikes and ride over there and sneak in by the stables and uh, watch the horses and the jockeys and watch the races and stuff and smell the beer and the cigar smoke. It's like going to a ball game, only different. I'm back. My cat, like, started fighting another cat in the window of my house. Cat just, another cat outside walked up to the window of my screen and my cat started fighting it. Like, they were fighting through the screen. Like, I run over there and there's like this giant white cat batting at my screen. That was pretty wild. Better look out. You know, I was... <sighs> cat's lucky I didn't have something in my hand. I just smashed his head in. That cat was like three times the size of my cat. You'll come home one day and there won't be a screen and there won't be a cat. Yeah, I know. It already happened once. Um, I woke up one morning and... Uh, I noticed the bathroom screen was pushed out and my cat was nowhere to be found. And my cat was on the second story roof of my house looking down at me meowing. <laughs> Honest to God, I had it on video. I got pictures of it. Uh, it's on my Facebook, but... Yeah, I woke up in the morning and I'm like, dude, where's my cat? I go outside and there he was, or there she is, on the roof. Uh, this cat will be the death of me. They're killers. Natural born. What was the question, Charlie? Sorry, the static's getting bad. Yeah, did you hear me talking about the NASCAR race? No, I didn't. That's probably when they were beating each other up. Yeah, the very first race ever. Uh, you know, organized race. In Rhode Island. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, I think it was a hill state. Now, was it hill state? I'm trying to think of the name of the drive in. The drive in season is closed. I looked it up on the internet to see when it closed, and I was reading the history on it. And before the drive in theater was there, there had been a racetrack. You know, a, a regular, you know, circle track. And according to the uh, the history of the track, when NASCAR was being formed, the very first organized, scheduled 
NASCAR type of race was held at that little track. How about that? That's cool, man. We were just talking about this the other night. Like, what it was maybe last night? Like, what uh, what places are famous for? Like, you know, every town almost, you know, is famous for something, you know? There's, <laughs> or a city, you know? There's always something famous from somewhere. Jim, I don't know how it is for you down there. I was just looking at the lightning map. And, uh, it looks like it'd probably be louder for you than it would be for anybody here. I don't know, though, with the way propagation is. But, I mean, it's like right off the coast of the eastern shore of Virginia. And, uh, Charlie, it's right off of your neck of the woods, too, man. So, and I'm kind of in the middle here between the two, so... Yeah, there's static crash hitting 25 over. Took half of the half of that transmission out, Charlie. So we're gonna bid adieu, and hopefully conditions will be better when I wake up in the morning for the old military radio net at 5 a.m. Be there, be square. Pre-net starts 4:30. 7:3, Jim, Charlie. We'll be listening. We we'll sitting here scanning the interwebs. Just, it's too loud for me now. Too loud. Too loud for my young ears. W3 MMR. Hey, Perry. Have a good night. Maybe we'll pitch in the morning. Maybe we won't. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, beautiful outside right now. Uh, I went outside for a couple of minutes just before I came down here. It was very comfortable out there. In fact, it was pretty comfortable at uh, 4 o'clock this morning when I was out there. I think I went out at quarter to 4 this morning. It was, it was like 61 degrees. Perfect for t-shirt and shorts. Hey, seven feet, Perry. Maybe I'll catch you in the morning. I can uh, guide myself up out of bed. I'm gonna try to. I'd like to tune into that. And, and uh, Charlie, I'm starting to hear you better down here. But Perry's right, man. There's a, a lot of lightning crash. I'm looking at this big storm off the coast here, right off the, uh, the eastern shore. A lot of activity down there. A lot of red, a lot of flashes going on, man. And it's a mess. The fish finder is just about a solid wall of purple. So, uh, I guess it's as good a time as any. I, I've got to get ready for this game. I've got to hook up my wife's laptop to the big screen here and uh, get down in. I think they start at 7.30. So, uh, Send through Charlie and catch you to Molly if you're around. Nice working you again. And uh, we'll catch you there. N1XCW and uh, W3MMR KM4XG73. Hey, 73, Jim. Hey. Got a fresh hole in the pipe here, so I'll be uh, down here for a few minutes anyway. Circulator, N1XZW. Have a good night, Charlie. Yeah, see you, boys. Catch you tomorrow. W3MMR.